Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your teacher, Mr. Stano. And we're going to continue on with the hydrology unit. Last time we left over talking about runoff. Now we're going to try to discuss or figure out what is infiltration. Infiltration is nothing more than water entering the ground. So runoff is the water flowing over the ground. Infiltration is it actually entering into the ground. There's also another term associated with this. I'm going to put it up here. It's known as percolation. And that's water moving down through the ground. So very similar terms. Uh, infiltration is the water entering the ground. Percolation is the water moving down through the ground. Whatever the case may be, water will infiltrate or penetrate the ground when the ground is flat and permeable. Permeable basically means that there's holes or very small pores in the surface of the ground that allows the water to go through. Like we can see here with this stepped area, it's flat and on those areas, we have the water that can infiltrate through. On the slopes, the water acts as runoff. And we can see here, here, and here, the slopes are runoffs and we can actually modify landscapes to have these flat areas to reduce the amount of runoff when we get to the base of the hill. This is water infiltrating the ground. You can see here we have vegetation. Remember when we decrease vegetation, it causes runoff. So when we increase it, we have more infiltration. So our vegetation is here. Water can infiltrate, percolate, and then move into our surface water sources eventually. If we replace that vegetation with a pavement, like we see here, or a parking lot or a road, the water hits the surface and will become runoff. So pavement decreases infiltration. Which takes us to permeability. And we mentioned the term a little bit earlier. Permeability is basically where the ground has pores in it to allow water to move into or infiltrate into the ground. When we have change, there are many things or characteristics of the ground that can change the permeability or the porosity of the ground. So a, that can all affect how the water moves in. But in order for water to move in, there must be pore spaces or it must be considered permeable. Also, and some more conditions that allow for infiltration, it has to be unsaturated. So if there's no water in the ground, the water can actually go in a little bit easier. Or like we said, a gentle slope will allow for a higher rates of infiltration. With the diagram to the right here, you can see these areas right here where water could go in and move through. This is going to be considered permeable and eventually out. The bigger the sediment, the higher the permeability. And with these diagrams coming up next, we can see that a little bit more. So these two, so we have A and we have B over here. You can see with B, these big spaces where water can go and move through and eventually out. Here, because they're smaller spaces, it's a little bit harder for the water to get through and out. So bigger spaces or the bigger the particle, we increase permeability. So increase size, we increase permeability. Kind of looking like that, a little direct relationship. Hope you enjoyed this screencast. We'll go on to this question in the next screencast. Take care. Goodbye.